blessing to be seen. Especially with all the troubles that are in our world today. With all the chaos and confusion. It, it is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. He said, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear. Though the earth be removed. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there it is a river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right early. He tells us, oh, clap your hands. All ye people, shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Let's try this. Let's, let's put our hands together and let us rejoice force a triumph, but truly there is victory in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to have a selection to begin our worship, and that will be followed by our scripture as well as prayer.
Lord today. And I'm leaning. I'm leaning. I'm leaning on you. So thankful for the strong shoulders that I had to lean on. Our scripture reading today will be found in the book of Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26 is our scripture reading for today. It says, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of those diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Amen. God bless your reading of the word. Heavenly Father, we pray that as we come into your presence today, we pray for the blessing of the Holy Spirit in the midst of us. We are coming to you, Heavenly Father, because we need you in this hour. We recognize that all have sinned and have come short of your glory. We're asking, Heavenly Father, that you will wash all of our sins away, that you will renew our strength, and that you will renew our joy. We're coming to you, O oh Lord, because we, we recognize that there's so much pain, and there's so much hurt, and there's so much suffering in this world. We're thankful to know today that you are still in the healing business. And so we ask, Heavenly Father, that all of those that we know, and even those who are here, those that we're close to that are going through right now, going through pain, going through sickness, uh, we pray for your healing grace on their behalf. Those that are on our hearts, those that are in our mind, those that we are concerned about. We pray for your healing grace. We come to you, Heavenly Father, there are so many that are going through difficult times. Uh, there are those who are concerned about tomorrow and, and the week after that and the week after that. Uh, Heavenly Father, we are casting today. We are casting all of our cares upon you because you promised in your word that you would care for us. So we are we are placing all of our burdens before you now. And we are thanking you for the peace that you've given unto us because you have promised us uh, that you will come through for your children. You said that no good thing will, will I withhold from them that walk uprightly. Uh, you said I've been young and I've been old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed making bread. And so we're thankful, Heavenly Father, that you are moving on our behalf. We pray for the families that are grieving right now. Grieving because of the loss of a loved one. Uh, we, we're asking, Heavenly Father, that you would extend uh, your healing grace to them right now. We're asking, Heavenly Father, that, uh, that the loss that they have suffered, I pray, Heavenly Father, uh, that you would cushion uh, the hurt, that you would, that you would cushion uh, them in their hour of loss. Uh, uh, we, we know that it is a very painful time for them, but Lord, we, we know that you're able to supply for their needs socially, financially, friends, loved ones, surround them with your love even now. 
in the way that you know how. We pray that you'll bless our time together yes. today. We pray that we will gain that which our hearts are in need of. We're thankful to you, Heavenly Father, because you're such a wonderful God. You're such a compassionate God. You're such a, an understanding God. You are, you are a God uh, that is all-powerful, a God that never ceases to amaze. And we praise and we glorify and we lift up your holy name. We ask all of these blessings faithfully in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen.
to worship and to glorify our God. We're thankful for our soloists and our musician today uh, as well. And today we want to take a look at Revelation chapter 9. Revelation chapter 9. And we want to notice what it tells us there in Revelation chapter 9 and verses 1 through 7. Revelation chapter 9 and verses 1 through 7. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. <clears throat> and he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke the locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold. 
and their faces were as the faces of men. Amen. Amen. Our subject matter today is entitled, When All Hell Breaks Loose. When all hell breaks loose. And today we are looking at the book of Revelation. And our purpose uh, for looking at this particular chapter, we won't necessarily identify the time frame that these events are taking place. But what we want to look at today is how uh, the principles and the characteristics that we see in this chapter, how they translate to our day and time. So we're talking about when all hell breaks loose. Uh, the Bible tells us in the very first verse, it talks about a star that is fallen, fallen from heaven unto the earth. And the fact that to this angel was given the key of a bottomless pit. So the fifth angel, now in this, in this sequence, there are seven angels that are blowing their trumpets. Seven angels, and, and as these angels blow their trumpets, they are warning those on planet Earth, warning them about events that are soon to take place. But we've come all the way down and to the fifth trumpet sound. And the Bible tells us that a star is fallen from heaven. And this star that is fallen, in Revelation, stars represent angels. And so the star is symbolic of a fallen angel. And fallen angels in scripture are also identified as demonic spirits. And the Bible lets us know that this particular demonic spirit, as it falls into the earth, the Bible lets us know that to this demonic power he was given the key of a bottomless pit. Now you're asking the question, what is this bottomless pit? Well, this bottomless pit, another word for it is abyss. Some people call it the underworld. And in this, within this underworld, we find in Revelation that within this underworld, there are demonic, diabolical, and evil powers. And the Bible tells us that this fallen angel has been given permission to unlock the powers of the underworld. The Bible says to him was given the key, the key, of a bottomless pit, the key to the underworld. Now, what this is telling us is that this particular angel has been given divine permission, permission for a season to unlock the bowels of hell, to unlock the bowels of this underworld. But we know ultimately the key, the authority 
over the underworld belongs to our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the Bible tells us very plainly. Jesus said, I am he that was dead, and, and it says, I am alive forevermore, and that I have the key of hell, death, and the grave. But this particular angel has been given for a season, temporary permission. What I'm trying to say to the words is that the devil can't do anything without God's permission. So very often we give the devil credit for everything that's going on. So very often we want to point to all that the that the devil or that the spiritual powers of evil are doing with the world. But I want you to know that the devil does not have total and complete authority. He can only do and go as far as our Heavenly Father will allow. So we see here in Revelation that he's given the key, this this fallen angel was given the key of the bottomless pit. And when he, when he turns the key to unlock the prison doors of this bottomless pit, this abyss, this underworld realm, when he unlocks uh, the doors of this prison, it is as if it is as if he has stirred up a hornet's nest. A hornet's nest of wickedness. A hornet's nest of hate. A hornet's nest of murder. And a hornet's nest of lies. And a hornet's nest of cruelty. If we read here in Revelation, the Bible lets us know that, that when this pit is open, when this pit is unlocked, the Bible tells us that a, that a vast smoke came up out of this pit. That's the scene that we see in this chapter. And this smoke, the Bible says, as it were, coming out of a great furnace. And the smoke filled the entire air. It filled the atmosphere. And it darkened the atmosphere. The Bible said that, that it blotted out the sun, that it blotted out and suffocated the air. The smoke that came up out of this and it tells us here in Revelation that when this smoke came up out of this pit, that the locusts, there were locusts and, and there were scorpions that emerged out of this particular pit. And when these locusts and these scorpions emerged out of the pit, it was then that all hell had broken loose in this particular area. Let me tell you what these locusts represent. Let me tell you what these scorpions represent. They represent the agencies of evil, the invisible forces of evil that are in our world today. And when these forces of evil were able to break out of this bottomless pit, they broke out and they brought hatred and, and evil and cruelty, lies and deception in every area that they invaded. They were released by this evil power and they were stirred up and they escaped through the smoke. And they invaded that entire area 
wreaking havoc in every direction that they were going in. The Bible lets us know that even though hell was breaking loose at this particular chapter, the Bible tells us in verse 3 it says that these locusts, which is symbolizing evil agencies and, and evil power, the Bible lets us know here in Revelation 9, it tells us very clearly and that, that they, that these locusts were given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And so these locusts that had the power of scorpions, and you see, scorpions, I don't know if you've seen them, but when they sting, they, they sting, their sting is, is, is a hundred times worse than a bee sting. And they inflict pain when they strike their victim. And when they strike their victims, they strike them suddenly, and they strike them unexpectedly. And this is exactly what we see going on in this chapter. These locusts emerge, and these locusts go on an all-out mission to inflict as much pain, to inflict as much suffering, to inflict as much sorrow and as much hurt as they can possibly inflict upon mankind. And as I look at the world today, it is as if, it is as if as we look at the, the scenes that we see on our screens, it is as if an evil power has unlocked the bowels of this bottomless pit. And for that reason, we see all kind of evil, we see all kind of hatred, and we see all kind of suffering, and we see all kind of hurt, and we see all kind of sorrow in every direction in which we look. But I've got some good news to share with you today. Amen. For the Bible tells us here in Revelation chapter 9, that even though these evil agents are spreading out throughout the world, and even though the smoke rising up from this bottomless pit is filling the atmosphere, is, is, is blocking the very sun that we need for life and for health and strength. This smoke is filling the atmosphere. And I want you to know today that, that it is, if we look at our world, it's as if a, a mysterious and a dangerous smoke has filled the atmosphere. When I look at the, at the fires in California, and I see all the smoke all the way from California to Oregon, I think not only about that smoke, but I think also about the smoke that's filling our atmosphere. Filling the atmosphere with hatred. Filling the atmosphere with evil. Filling the atmosphere with lies. Filling the atmosphere with delusion. You see, Jesus, the Bible says that he is the light of the world. And I want you to know that, that these powers of darkness, they despise the light of the world. And so they want to do everything they can to block out the light of the world, which is Jesus. They want to block out the light of love. They want to block out uh, the light of life. They want to block out the light of compassion. They want to block out the light of generosity. They want to block out the light of helpfulness. And they want to block out the light of hope. And so for this reason, this smoke, invisible, invisible and this mysterious smoke, is filling the atmosphere just as strongly as the symbolic smoke is filling the air in the book of Revelation. 
And so these locusts are on a mission. They are on a mission to inflict as much pain and suffering in this world that they possibly can. And we see in our world, oh, we, everywhere, every direction we look, we see suffering all around us. We see the, the coronavirus all around us. We see all kind of outbreaks of diseases all around us. We hear about wars and rumors of wars all around us. We see nothing but fear all around us. And so the smoke has filled the atmosphere to the point that we can barely breathe. And God wants us to breathe. He wants us to breathe in love. He wants us to breathe in compassion. He wants us to breathe in the things of God. He wants us to breathe in joy rather than breathing in fear and sorrow. And so what we see in our world, we see our picture of all hell breaking loose. But the good news that I want to tell you today is that although uh, these locusts and these scorpions have, uh, these scorpions and locusts of hate and, and greed and animosity are filling our world. I want you to know that in spite of all of that, that we have no need to be discouraged for our God is still in control. But you ask the question, how do we know that our God is still in control? Let's look a little further here at Revelation chapter 9. And we will see exactly how we can know that our God even when all hell is breaking loose, that he's in control. We read here in Revelation 9. We read here in verse 4. And it was commanded them. Look at that now. And it was commanded them that they, talking about the locusts, talking about these agents of evil, and it was commanded them. That means they got an answer to somebody. Amen. And it was commanded them. That means they don't have full authority. Because you can't command somebody that's in authority. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing nor any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And so the Bible says that these evil powers, these agents of hell that are broken loose, they, they don't have complete authority. For God commanded them that they can only go but so far. And God commands them at the same way that he commands the waves of the ocean, hitherto shalt thou come, and no further. And the waves of the ocean must roll back at the command of Almighty God. And in that same way, the demons of hell must roll back and fall back at the command of Almighty God. And they can't do any more than what Almighty God permits them to do. Isn't that good news? I said, isn't that good news? And so the Bible tells us that when all hell is breaking loose, God commanded these locusts and these scorpions that have arisen from out of the bottomless pit. He commanded them that they shouldn't hurt the grass. He commanded them that they shouldn't hurt the trees. And he commanded them that they should not hurt any vegetation. And other words, he was so powerful 
When the five months are over, there's nothing more that the enemy can do. He is restricted in every way. In every way that a heavenly father chooses. A heavenly father has full control. And he must answer to that ultimate authority. And so I'm not intimidated by their power. Neither am I afraid. For I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. And my captain has all power. Power over the enemy. I'm not intimidated by Satan's agents who have power. For my captain has all power. My captain has unlimited power. The locusts may have power. And the scorpions may have power. The fallen angels may have power. But I'm not intimidated by the power because my God has all power. And so when all hell is breaking loose, I'm resting in the calm assurance that my Savior is in full control and that my heavenly Father is in full control. I am resting in the calm assurance that although all hell is breaking loose, that my captain is protecting me and that my captain is providing for my needs, and that my captain has won the battle, and that the battle is already won. Thank you, Jesus, that the battle is already won. It was finished on the cross of Calvary. Our Savior was crucified. He was crucified one Friday. And the battle was won. At the very moment that he was crucified. And before our Savior had hung his head, before our Savior had hung his head and died, our Savior uttered the words. He uttered the words of total victory. He uttered the words of victory. What were the words that our Savior uttered? He uttered the words, it is finished. The devil was finished on the cross of Calvary. Death was finished on the cross of Calvary. And our Savior, and he uttered those words. He hung his head and he died. He died on that old rugged cross. The devil thought he had gained the victory. But when the devil did recognize that our Savior had gained the victory. But early on that Sunday morning, our Savior surprised the enemy. Our Savior rose from the dead. He rose victorious over the enemy. So the battle is already won. And just prior to his ascension, ascension in the glory, listen to the words of Jesus. He said, all power is given unto me. All power is given unto me. In heaven and in earth. Our Savior has all power. And he said, I am with you even to the end of the world. So although the inner man may be exercising his power, our Savior, he told us, he told us a long time ago that I have all power. So all hell, the power of Jesus' name, that angels cross the fall, bring forth the royal diadem, and crown him Lord of all. All hell, the power 
Jesus' name. Our Savior has all power. When all hell is picking lips, our Savior has all power. We can rest confidently that our Savior is in control and that he has all power. All power in heaven and in earth. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless the name of our Savior Jesus. There may be someone today you've heard, you felt the call of God. And today you want to make your decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. You understand that he is the son of the living God and that he is the Savior of man, set down into this world to pay the price for all of our sins. So that we can have a right to eternal life. And so that we might be forgiven and born again. I pray today that you will make your decision to accept Christ to accept the forgiveness, to accept his sacrifice on your behalf, and that you'll give him your all in all. As this selection is presented to us as our soloists and musicians comes, I want you to think about that decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know the man? I said, do you know the man? Do you know the man from
night at 6 30 for our Bible study. I encourage you to join us for our Bible study on Wednesday night. And we look forward to what the Lord has in store. Amen. Let's stand together as we have our benediction. Father, we thank you today for grace and mercy. Oh, Lord, we glorify your name. We pray that as we leave this place, that you will dismiss us with your favor. We pray that you will bless our going out and our coming in, our rising up and our lying down, both now and until we shall meet again. <laughs>